the night before the fight with him, I, I dreamed in my sleep that I knocked him out and he died in the ring. And I got up that morning and I told the commission that I wasn't going to fight. And they said, why? And I told them what I had dreamed. They said, oh, Ray, no, that's just a dream. And they called a, a Catholic priest and a minister. And they came and they talked to me and told me to go ahead with the fight. And just like we dreamed, although I hit him a left hook and he died right there in the rain. Sugar Ray Robinson, who has been widely stated as the best boxer of all time, weighing at 130 pounds and having the punching power strong enough to kill a man in a single hit, let us go over what makes him such a great boxer and also talk about the dark truth you didn't know about Sugar Ray Robinson and who he truly was. Sugar Ray, you mentioned you wanted to speak on some things today. I would like to publicly apologize for those things that I did to my wife. Sugar Ray Robinson, my name is Sugar Ray Robinson. It wasn't always Sugar Ray Robinson. I was born Walker Smith, May 3rd, 1921. Born Walker Smith Jr. on May 3rd, 1921 in Ailey, Georgia, his early life, marked by significant hardships and remarkable resilience, laid the foundation for his legendary boxing career. Robinson's parents, Walker Smith Sr. and Layla Hurst, were sharecroppers. The family lived in poverty, working tirelessly to make ends meet. In search of better opportunities, they migrated to Detroit, Michigan, when Robinson was still a young boy. The move, however, did not immediately bring the stability they had hoped for. Detroit in the 1920s and 1930s was a city teeming with opportunities for some, but rife with challenges for many African-American families. Robinson's family faced severe economic hardships and young Walker Jr. found himself in a tough environment. His father worked long hours as a cement mixer to support the family while his mother took on various domestic jobs. Despite their efforts, the family often struggled to put food on the table. In 1932, at the age of 11, Robinson's parents separated. His mother decided to move to Harlem, New York, seeking a fresh start. The move to Harlem proved to be a turning point in Robinson's life. Harlem, with its vibrant culture and bustling streets, offered new opportunities, but also presented its own set of challenges. Robinson's interest in boxing began in Harlem. He was introduced to the sport at the Salem Crescent Gym, where he first started training. However, his journey into boxing was not straightforward. Robinson once recounted his early days, saying, I didn't start out thinking I was going to be a boxer. I just wanted to have something to do after school, something to keep me off the streets. No, just the opposite, Ed. I've never enjoyed boxing. I, uh, I just, it's just a business with me, and I guess I just, I know I've never enjoyed it. He created a new place for the imagination of a fighter, the way Louis Armstrong or Frank Sinatra or Marlon Brando opened a new room in their art form. Robinson's initial foray into boxing was marked by a lack of proper equipment and training facilities. He often had to improvise using makeshift punching bags and gloves. Despite these challenges, his natural talent quickly became evident. His determination and drive were unwavering. He once said, there were times when I didn't have enough to eat, but I never let that stop me from going to the gym. Boxing was my escape. At the age of 15, Walker Smith Jr borrowed the Amateur Athletic Union AAU card of his friend Ray Robinson to compete in a boxing tournament. He adopted the name and eventually earned the nickname Sugar from a sports writer who described his style as sweet as sugar. The name stuck and Sugar Ray Robinson was born. Robinson's teenage years were a blend of struggle and rising success. He attended DeWitt Clinton High School in the Bronx but dropped out before graduating. Despite the academic setback, his boxing career was on the rise. He compiled an impressive amateur record of 85-0 with 69 knockouts, demonstrating his prowess and earning the moniker Sugar Ray. As an African-American boxer during the 1930s and 1940s, Robinson faced significant racial discrimination. He encountered segregated facilities, limited opportunities, and biased officiating. However, he never let these obstacles deter him. Robinson's mother, Layla, was a constant source of strength. She often reminded him, no matter how tough things get, you have to keep fighting. Never let anyone tell you you're not good enough. You ever get a little worried about, gee, maybe uh, my condition is going to get so far away that I can't get back into condition? 
Or is that no problem? No, no, Chris. I never think like that. I guess I have so much ham in me. I, I think positive always. I believe I can do anything. And boxing's been my... It is my business, and it's been my business. I'm not... I don't know. I can't. I don't know all the answers, but I'm the greatest authority in the world on Sugar Ray Robinson, and I have some idea on just what he can do and what he can't do. Sugar Ray Robinson began his professional boxing career in 1940 and quickly rose to prominence as one of the sport's most remarkable talents. His combination of speed, power, agility, and ring intelligence set him apart, earning him a place among the greatest boxers of all time. His debut fight took place on October 4, 1940, where he won a second-round knockout against Joe Echevarria. He quickly amassed a series of victories, showcasing his incredible skills and earning the nickname Sugar for his smooth, effortless style. Robinson's style was characterized by a blend of speed, power and precision. He possessed exceptional footwork, allowing him to move gracefully around the ring and avoid his opponent's attacks while positioning himself for powerful counter-punches. His ability to switch between offense and defense seamlessly made him a formidable opponent. Robinson's hand speed and footwork work were unparalleled. He could throw rapid combinations with precision and power, often leaving his opponents bewildered. He had an innate understanding of the sport. He could read his opponent's movements and adjust his strategy accordingly, making him adaptable and unpredictable. Despite his relatively slender build, Robinson packed considerable power in both hands. His knockouts often came from well-timed, precise punches rather than sheer force. Boxing's been very good to me and I'm more than happy to do donate my entire purse to the Damon Runyon Cancer Fund. One of the most famous rivalries in boxing history was between Robinson and Jake LaMotta, known as the Bronx Bull. They fought six times, with Robinson winning five of those encounters. Their sixth and final bout, held on February 14, 1951, is famously known as the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Robinson dominated the fight, winning by a 13th round technical knockout. LaMotta famously said, no one ever hit me that hard. He was the toughest fighter I ever faced. On August 27, 1943, Robinson fought the legendary Henry Armstrong. Robinson, respecting Armstrong's legacy, fought a measured fight, outboxing him over 10 rounds to win a unanimous decision. Armstrong later remarked, Robinson was the best I ever fought. He had everything. Robinson won the world welterweight title on December 20, 1946, by defeating Tommy Bell. He then moved up to middleweight, where he won his first middleweight title on February 14, 1951, against Jake LaMotta. Robinson's ability to compete and excel in multiple weight classes further solidified his reputation as one of the greatest boxers. On May 1, 1957, Robinson faced Gene Fulmer in a rematch. Robinson regained the middleweight title with a stunning left hook knockout in the fifth round, a punch that is still celebrated as one of the greatest knockouts in boxing history. Fulmer later said, I knew he was a great fighter, but I didn't expect that kind of punch. It was perfect. One of the darkest moments of Robinson's career occurred on June 24, 1947, when he fought Jimmy Doyle. Robinson entered the ring as a heavy favorite, but the outcome of the fight would leave a lasting scar on his life and career. In the eighth round, Robinson landed a devastating left hook that knocked Doyle unconscious. Doyle was carried out of the ring on a stretcher and taken to a nearby hospital. Despite immediate medical attention, Doyle never regained consciousness and passed away later that night due to a brain injury. But it turned out he... It was a prescient dream because he killed Doyle with a single left hook. Robinson was deeply affected by Doyle's death. He later revealed that he had experienced a premonition of the tragic outcome. In his autobiography, Robinson wrote, The night before the fight, I had a dream that I killed Jimmy Doyle. I was so disturbed that I went to my manager and told him I didn't want to fight, but we had a meeting with a Catholic priest who assured me it was just a dream and that I should go on with the fight. The impact of Doyle's death on Robinson was profound. He contemplated quitting boxing, but ultimately decided to continue, using the tragedy as a driving force to help others. Robinson donated the earnings from the fight to Doyle's mother, showing his compassionate side amidst the brutal nature of the sport. Ray, uh, you haven't uh, been in the ring for a fight since May 1st, and that's been quite some time ago, and I know uh, after that great victory that you've had a lot of time to think, a lot of time to uh, take it easy. What have you been doing since May 1st? Well, I've been giving a lot of time to my, young, my youngster, Ray the second, and also playing a lot of golf and trying to do some things in my, with my businesses to rehabilitate them and get them uh, 
to the standpoint where I can feel a little more relaxed and things I, I'm happy to say that things are coming along a lot better and now I'm concentrating mostly upon this fight and then what I'm going to do after that. Robinson's influence on boxing extends far beyond his in-ring accomplishments. He was a pioneer in many ways, setting standards for future generations of boxers. His style and techniques have been studied and emulated by countless fighters. Muhammad Ali, often regarded as the greatest boxer of all time, openly admired Robinson, stating, Sugar Ray Robinson was my idol. His speed, his footwork, his style, it was poetry in motion. Sugar Ray Robinson. Sugar Ray Robinson. He's still my idol. That if I said anybody was greater than me, I'm not feeling because because he's not the champ now, and he's going where people don't know him that much this generation. God will punish me if I don't give credit where it's due. It was this man that inspired me watching him fight. I mean, he had a style. Robinson's ability to captivate audiences with his skill and charisma also helped elevate the sport of boxing to new heights. He was one of the first athletes to achieve celebrity status beyond his sport, paving the way for modern athletes to leverage their fame. Robinson on his career. I had a natural ability, but it was the hard work and determination that made me great. I always believed in giving my best, no matter the circumstances. Jake LaMotta on Robinson. He was the toughest fighter I ever faced. No one else hit me that hard. Sugar Ray was in a class by himself. Muhammad Ali on Robinson. Sugar Ray Robinson was the king, the master, my idol. I wanted to be just like him. Gene Fulmer on Robinson's power. I knew he was a great fighter, but I didn't expect that kind of punch. It was perfect. It was the best punch I ever took. Sugar Ray Robinson's professional career was a blend of brilliance and tragedy, marked by some of the most memorable fights in boxing history and a personal journey that revealed both his strengths and vulnerabilities. His legacy as one of the greatest boxers of all time is undisputed, and his impact on the sport continues to resonate. Robinson's story is a testament to the complexity of human nature and the enduring spirit of a true champion. Boxing aside, these are the dark truths about Sugar Ray Robinson that you might not know. Despite being celebrated as one of the greatest boxers in history, Robinson's life outside the ring was marred by troubling behaviours and personal struggles that contrasted sharply with his public persona. One of the most disturbing aspects of Robinson's life was his history of domestic violence. Good to live with. He's kind, he's considerate. And uh, he will never share a problem with you. If there's anything that worries him, he keeps it to himself. So times like that, he may be a little quiet, but he's wonderful to live with. His first wife, Edna May Holly, endured significant abuse during their marriage. It was outrageous <laughs> the way he would haul off and slap me if he thought that I disapproved or was getting ready to leave in any way. He was going to straighten me right out. Edna May later revealed the extent of the violence she suffered, stating, Ray would come home drunk and beat me for no reason. I lived in fear every day, not knowing what would set him off. Their tumultuous relationship was marked by frequent arguments and physical confrontations. Robinson's fame and success in the ring did little to mitigate his violent tendencies at home. Edna May's accounts of the abuse highlight the stark contrast between the charming, charismatic athlete seen by the public. Sugar, what are your plans now? Be a good husband and my wife. Go home and give my son some of my time. I've been away and my little boy, seven years old. He, he, I may be a champion, everybody else, but he's missing the daddy. And I'm gonna get home and be, be a good daddy to him. And the volatile, abusive man behind closed doors. Robinson's issues with alcohol were well documented and contributed significantly to his erratic behavior. Du dual personality. Uh, Ray would be charming, gracious, and uh, one minute and the next minute uh, have a stiletto in your back. His drinking often exacerbated his aggressive tendencies and led to unpredictable outbursts. This behavior extended beyond his personal relationships and affected his professional interactions as well. Robinson's manager, George Gainford, once remarked, when Ray was sober, he was the best man you could know, but when he drank, he became a different person, angry, violent, 
and out of control. Robinson's drinking problem also had a detrimental impact on his career. There were instances where he would show up to training sessions and fights under the influence, compromising his performance and professionalism. His struggle with alcoholism was a battle that he never fully overcame, and it remained a significant issue throughout his life. Despite earning millions over the course of his boxing career, Robinson faced severe financial difficulties. His lavish lifestyle, which included owning a nightclub, maintaining a large entourage, and indulging in expensive habits, drained his finances. He was known for his generosity, often giving away large sums of money to friends and acquaintances, but this also contributed to his financial instability. He learned that his businesses had really financially collapsed. Robinson's poor financial decisions and lack of proper management left him in dire straits, particularly in his later years. He was forced to continue fighting well past his prime to make ends meet. Reflecting on his financial troubles, Robinson once said, I made a lot of money, but I spent a lot too. I trusted the wrong people and didn't think about the future. It's something I deeply regret. Later in life, Robinson faced significant mental health issues, including depression and signs of dementia. The physical toll of boxing, coupled with his personal struggles and financial woes, contributed to his deteriorating mental state. He experienced bouts of severe depression, which were compounded by his ongoing battle with alcoholism. Robinson's mental health issues were further exacerbated by the tragic death of Jimmy Doyle. The guilt and trauma from that incident haunted him for the rest of his life. Around that time, I began to see that Dad was a little bit different than Dad had always been. In a candid interview, Robinson admitted, not a day goes by that I don't think about Jimmy. I wish I could take it all back. It's a burden I will carry with me forever. The physical toll of Robinson's long and grueling boxing career was immense. He fought well into his 40s, and the cumulative impact of the blows he received led to long-term health issues. In his later years, Robinson suffered from Alzheimer's disease and diabetes, conditions that significantly affected his quality of life. His declining health was a stark reminder of the brutal nature of the sport he had dedicated his life to. Robinson's relationships were often as tumultuous as his career. After his marriage to Edna May ended in divorce, he remarried twice. His second marriage to Barbara Johnson also ended in divorce, marred by accusations of infidelity and further instances of domestic violence. Robinson's third marriage to Millie Wiggins, Bruce lasted until his death, but it too was not without its challenges. Millie, in later interviews, spoke about Robinson's struggles and how they affected their marriage. Ray was a complex man, she said. He had a lot of demons, and it was hard to live with him at times, but he also had a good heart and a deep sense of guilt for his past actions. As an African-American athlete during the mid-20th century, Robinson faced systemic racism and exploitation. He often had to fight under unfair conditions and was sometimes exploited by promoters and managers who took advantage of his talent for their financial gain. These experiences contributed to his distrust of those around him and fueled his erratic behavior. Robinson's encounters with racism extended beyond the ring. He faced segregation and discrimination in everyday life, which added to the psychological burden he carried. Despite his fame, he was not immune to the racial prejudices of the time, and this reality deeply affected him. Robinson's foray into business, particularly with his nightclub, was marred by controversy. The club was a financial drain and was often linked to unsavory activities, including associations with criminal elements. These ventures highlighted Robinson's naivety in business matters and his tendency to trust the wrong people, further contributing to his financial downfall. In his later years, Robinson reflected on his life with a mixture of pride and regret. He acknowledged his shortcomings and expressed remorse for the pain he had caused others. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, he said in one of his final interviews, but I've also tried to make amends. I hope people can remember the good I've done and forgive the bad. Sugar Ray Robinson's life was a complex tapestry of triumph and tragedy. While his accomplishments in the ring are legendary, the darker aspects of his personal life reveal a man who struggled with many inner demons. His story is a poignant reminder that even the greatest of heroes have flaws and that the pressures of fame and success can sometimes bring out the worst in people. Sugar Ray Robinson passed away on April 12, 1989, at the age of 67, 
His death was primarily due to complications related to Alzheimer's disease and diabetes. Robinson's later years were marked by significant health challenges, a stark contrast to the vibrant and dynamic athlete he once was. Robinson was diagnosed with diabetes and Alzheimer's disease, conditions that severely affected his quality of life. His struggle with Alzheimer's, a progressive neurological disorder that affects memory and cognitive function, was particularly debilitating. Over time, the disease eroded his ability to recognize familiar faces and recall important details of his life and career. This was a devastating turn for someone who had once relied so heavily on his mental sharpness and agility in the boxing ring. In addition to Alzheimer's, Robinson also faced complications from diabetes. Diabetes, a chronic condition that affects the body's ability to regulate blood sugar levels, can lead to numerous health issues, including cardiovascular disease, nerve damage, kidney failure, and more. For Robinson, managing diabetes was an ongoing battle, further complicated by his declining cognitive function due to Alzheimer's. As his health deteriorated, Robinson required increasing levels of care. His third wife, Millie Wiggins Bruce, was by his side throughout his illness, providing support and companionship. Despite the many challenges, she remained devoted to him, highlighting the enduring bond they shared. In his final years, Robinson's contributions to boxing were widely recognized and celebrated. He was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1990, a year after his death, cementing his legacy as one of the greatest boxers in history. His impact on the sport, both in terms of his in-ring achievements and his influence on future generations of fighters, remains profound. Reflecting on his life, Robinson once said, I've had my ups and downs, but I'm proud of what I've accomplished. I've lived my life to the fullest, and I've tried to give back whenever I could. This sentiment encapsulates the duality of his existence, an extraordinary athlete who faced personal demons and health struggles, but ultimately left an indelible mark on the world of boxing.